Welcome back to Two Bros in a Coffee Shop. It's nice to say that. My name's Grant. My name's Jason. And this is episode 13. There we go. Um, yeah, so we're back, just the two of us. Um, we're not chefs no more. Now we're <laughs> coffee drinkers again. Exactly. And if you're watching the video, you can see that we've got a nice wall of mugs for you. It's almost like the Berlin Wall because we are doing a <laughs> German episode. I don't this know. Is true. This I don't is know true. if that's going to like push on the verge of being too too edgy, but um, yeah, welcome to the German episode. Um, we're sitting six feet apart because we got to follow it's this. True. Um, Do the tape measure on the video. Six feet, don't worry about it, okay? Six feet. You can even see the microphones are like swapped around. We're yeah. like right We're on the edge. We're changing it up for you guys. Keep it safe. Keep it simple. Keep, Ex- it, keep it stupid. Exactly. Right? We're the, just, the, we're just the, glad to be back. The three S's. The three S's? Okay. Yeah. I, all right, all right. Well, I mean, even the coffee that we're going to be drinking today starts with an S, and that is... Spitball by Press Coffee Roasteries. Mm. And it's got a flavor of strawberry, chocolate, and creamy is what's written on the bag. I literally, when I bought this, thought of you, Grant. So I, I walked in there and I was like, okay. So and had, you walked in where? So I love how it's a German podcast, but it's a Phoenix, Arizona coffee. So Because it, of Corona. Yeah, literally like I would have been in Germany or someone would have been in Germany by now. Um, would have been like, hey guys, pick me up a coffee, but I know it's more beer capital kind of thing over there. And then someone would have grabbed it for us. Easy peasy. But um, with all the halts, we're uh, we're pulling out some other sleeves and we're trying something. We're gonna we're mixing it up, you know what I mean? Don't hate on us. So um, when I was over in um, Phoenix, when we were at that trade show, just before the whole world kind of went all nuts, um, stopped stopped in his tracks it, oh just, my i did not think of it i was like oh what like i didn't even i actually didn't even know did you realize it. that was probably the last time you were gonna hop on a plane on your way home that was the last time I like miss, if you think about it right? i miss planes man like what? i literally legit in my bio i changed it and i just wrote i miss planes like i do <laughs> and um i actually think um Shoot, I think there actually was like a moment where like people were wearing masks. I think someone was wearing a mask when I was going down because it was like kind of like that. Right. I think it was on the way home. No, no, it was on the way home. But it was like I didn't know when I flew in that it was like one of my last trips. Like I was exactly. I I thought this was just like a Chinese thing and everybody's losing their marbles. And then it turned into a whole thing, man. And I'm emotional because I'm a forever nuts kind of guy on the plane. A little nap, you know what I mean? A little book read. I actually read a book on that flight. Wow, impressive. Called, okay, wait. I actually have it. This is this is not scripted. We're no. uh, we're we're going to the book here. This is this is legit. I've been trying to read this book, but every time um, I try to read it, I, I go I get on Netflix. <laughs> I love how you're reading a book about habits and you can't even finish reading. <laughs> legit. So I. I am determined tomorrow to read some because I was trying to watch this movie called or TV show called. Outer. Okay, and you might want to say the title of the book. I did mention a little bit about it, but true. We're gonna try to not get too distracted. But so this book is called Atomic Habits: Tiny Changes, Remarkable Results by nice. James Clear. Legit, I don't like reading books that much. This is a gem, like legit, amazing. Like I'm already on chapter. Ow. Um. From a physical appearance, it looks like he's one-eighth of the way through the book. Shut up. Um, (laughs) I'm on chapter five. And I was on the plane reading it, and it was just, like, punching me in the face. I was just like, wow. And I took out my phone, and I was writing down notes, and it was, like, unbelievable. And actually, a friend of mine... um, And did you start reading this on your flight back from Arizona? Yeah. Okay. And and it was, like, a three-hour flight, so I was, like, reading the whole time. Okay. With a T, forever nuts. Like, come on. You get that tea and you get a book, you're set. Um, and look, some water. But a, a friend of mine named um, Esther Fraser um, actually t- posted on her story. And then I was like, what was that book name again? Because I didn't, it like left after 24 hours. And I was just shocked because I was like, this book's amazing after just picking it up. And I was like, why don't I try something new? Um, and then after that, basically, no more plane riding. So I was like, shoot, I'll try to read it again. So actually, just last weekend, um, I tried to pick it up and, and start, but then I got into a new series on Netflix and I started binge watching that like crazy. Right on. So, great book. 
um we'll put we'll leave it on our bank our link or bio whatever like okay that we're gonna Instagram. it's we're now a coffee book reading and stuff like that we should offer it up there here you, you want to pass me the coffee press i'll start pressing it uh yes oh i can press it down okay um, um oh no you want to go no it's fine um no so what i was just gonna say is this coffee that i'm pressing actually right now um i thought about it oh it might be a I might have went a little rough on the water, but it's okay. Sorry, Grant. What do you mean rough on the water? Well, like it might be a little weak. I feel bad. It's it's not going to be weak. Trust me. Uh, I don't know. I, I guess it's an I, espresso. I, this coffee is an espresso blend. That's true. So I thought about it as Grant. So it's literally if if a tea guy was trying to drink it, it's literally strawberry, chocolate, and creamy. I don't get the creamy part. Like they're just like it's creamy. Like like okay. it's like it's it's smooth. You know what I mean? To that touch, like it's like. Mm. Cream. cream maybe we'll have to we'll have to see i'll have to see if it lives up to its creamy name but i'm pretty sure the strawberry and the chocolate is going to be interesting because you're going to get that acidic acidic from the strawberry and then you get that punch from the chocolate that deep rich undertones then sure. throw that cream of physical texture on we'll mm-hmm. we'll see we'll see and then it's literally titled spitball so you know, it's I'm going in with an open mind. Um, I've got big expectations as well as an open mind. I don't know if that even works. Um, oh, you're you're gonna be good. Oh, also, because um, it's COVID life. How about we put a little bit of hand sanitizer? Hand on? sanitizer on. Yes, that's true. We, like, if I can open this, there you go. All right. <laughs> I just thought, you know what? Like, whatever. This is what I do every day. I put some of this on. Then I put a little gold bond moisturizing on. Here's some audio, just rubbing hands. (laughs) Um, But yeah, okay. So that's a little, um, it actually has aloe aloe vera um, in the hand sanitizer. And then this one's actually It smells good. This is my favorite hand lotion. Okay. Smells, it's amazing. Um, What's it called? Um, It's like non-greasy too. But like it's actually non greasy when they actually say it's not greasy. I had to buy new hand cream. Um, right now it's nine dollars nine ninety nine for all lotions in Shoppers Drug Mart, which is weird. But that's that's good. Just that's want to let you guys know because um, you need to put that lotion on after you put that hand sanitizer on, right? Because it's gonna dry it out for sure. So you got to do that. So um, I'm gonna just pick a mug. So these are all the German mugs, other than just one. But there's a story behind that one. Right. So I'm just gonna grab from the top. You know what? I'm gonna do the same. Change it up. So uh, I grabbed Munich. And I grabbed Germany. Been both there. Now my hands, okay, here's a paper towel because my hands are slipping. All right. Slipping and sliding. Oh, I'll grab you another one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Safe life. Thank you. Okay. Um, on, on my mug, I have uh, a pretzel, a tower I've actually been in, a wiener, a tower that I've seen before with a like little like human statue thing. I mean, let, let me also t- <laughs> chime in. Mine also has some sausages on it as well. You have some wieners too on yours? Yeah, so. You, have you a pretzel on yours too? I actually don't. I do have a soccer ball though. Do you have a beer glass? I do have you a, do love their no, no, no. beer. I have a beer glass with a cloud. <laughs> like it's in the sky. This Mine, is so German. My beer glass looks like this beer glass. Oh wow, we have a beer glass with us today. That's a interesting. Little yeah, that's a little. That's later. But um, I actually went up this building. It's called One Eight One. I actually had dinner up there at one point, so that's really cool to have that um, on the mug. So hey, we're bringing travel back, even though if, like travel, there's a travel ban. You know, we're gonna go with German Germany. I've been to Germany for robotics competition. I was in Frankfurt. In, you know, all those places. Yeah, I went to just Munich for um, a trade show. It's nice. like the world's largest trade show every three years, and then it just luckily I got hired to this um, to the company. Um, when it just happened so i was like this is amazing and then i went over there did you ever stay in a hostel those things are weird no i stayed in a holiday Inn express but let me just tell you their holiday Inn expresses make it way better than our holiday expresses that was like a five-star holiday Inn. yeah i stayed at um like a very high class uh, hotel Mm. where like like literally they had like a piano play person playing in the lobby with like their own restaurant and it was really nice it was like just down the road oh. from like where we were competing and there was like a huge traffic circle well not even a traffic circle it was like a park yep. in the center of it and like you could, dr- could drive around it and then we would go down for breakfast and go get like our fresh bread and stuff oh it um, was so good buddy you know my thing a fresh cappuccino in europe 
with like a little bit of like a croissant or something like that. Unfortunately, you know I mean? back then I wasn't drinking coffee, so I can't I can't write home about it. But then again, like I was like probably Holy. I'm pretty sure I was like 13 or something. So <laughs> like dude, I was dude, I was definitely never, not even into the tea realm. It's yet. not even it's never too young to start with coffee. You know what I mean? I drink that all day long. Isn't there actually though like <laughs> medical <laughs> um, implications of drinking coffee when you're young? Ah, uh, <laughs> and might stint your growth. Right. And might maybe. You know what I mean? You're gonna you're gonna shoot up like a sprout. That is, um, all right, so we've fair. definitely got this coffee sitting around for a while. So let's let's. I'll no, for sure. I'll pass uh, you my mug. For sure. Let me uh, let me get you that. You did use hand sanitizer, right? Oh, oh yeah, I did. did. Hey. Ah, okay, okay. Um, let's, uh, as you pour that, I'm going to open up our links for our travel segment. And uh, if oh, people... Oh, this is, this is black or brown, I mean. Like, very brown. So you mean it's almost like it's strong? It's very rich? Oops. I hit it in the mic. <laughs> Listen, you haven't done it in a while, so That's fair. you, you got to do it. Every I was long. using Keurig's last episode. <laughs> That's true. I wanted to disown myself. Even though you literally said, well, I mean, hey, that was our, like, very comfortable, easy to drink, easy to start. Um, what's the face? <laughs> Bro, these are so dark. Listen, here's a little glimpse into the behind the scenes of the podcast. Uh, we generally grind the beans. We get it all ready um, to start. And Jason was like, uh, I'll put in an extra couple. Uh, he actually went and ground up more beans to put it in because he's always afraid of making it too light. Yeah, because I got roasted about that. Literally, From who? Yeah. Dennis. Little Denny. Well, I mean, he's not here drinking the coffee. <laughs> That's fair. He doesn't know how we make it. We make it according to the way you're supposed to. And then Jason's always like, nah. So needless to say, little Denny, uh, we're going to be drinking dark, dark coffee today. <laughs> yeah. Also, didn't touch both of the, the forks were, were not touched, so we were good. Exactly. We're just staying that healthy. That, that, actually, the cream made it look nice. It's Is it dark? Is it? I mean, is it <laughs> not dark, is it? Oh... My goodness. Is it strong? Go ahead and taste it. No, it's not bad. It's better than Tamp. <laughs> I don't even know if you're I don't even know if we're drinking from the same coffee, dude. You don't like it? I like dark coffee. Um this It's it's smooth. It's creamy. <laughs> oh it's, my. you can taste the chocolate. Yeah, I was just gonna about to say that, like, after just kind of sitting there after the shell shock I got in my mouth, I could tastes definitely good, taste eh? the strawberry. Dude, it actually tastes really good. I like this. You don't like it? Um, no, it feels like someone's punching me in the mouth. Like someone made it way, way too dark. Someone it's like it. literally like chewing on the bean. Honestly, wait, wait, wait. Give me the bag. I'm gonna chew on a bean. I want to tell you something. Someone's been cheating on not drinking enough coffee. What do you mean? Who was cheating on you. not drinking coffee? I don't know coffee? if you drank enough coffee recently, so it's not in your palate. Quality, so, they're, so their back of their bag says quality driven, community focused. Dude, the bean is way better than the coffee. So yeah, it's a black bag with an eagle. Um, very like, just modern. You know what I mean? What Starbucks is trying to do with their logos. But the thing is, is when I tried to ship it with my company, because I didn't have enough room in my space, I, I FedExed it. Literally ripped open. And then there's literally a like a Ziploc thing that, so it, I had to put it in another bag for it not to go bad, but it was, it's garbage. So you need to work on your bags, press coffee, so you can actually like transport them. I wonder um, if it got too hot. Maybe and just exploded. Mm -hmm. um, but the other bags and the thing, I had three different coffees from that trip. And that one's the one, the only one that exploded. Um, I'm giving this a second taste. It, you can taste strawberry. It's weird. It's definitely, okay. From my initial reaction, super strong. Yep. I don't think I'd like make this to the extent of strength that you way overdid it. But if you like sip it's it. It's smooth though. It's smooth. You can taste the smoothness. Um, But like. When it comes down to actual flavor, if I if I take it down a notch, and plus I've also tasted the bean, it's good. It is good. I definitely, let's not 
put like 50% more coffee than we yeah. need to in the our cream, press. The cream Plus the day. 75% of the water we're actually supposed to put in there. So, but yeah. I think I think it's a good coffee. It's not bad. It's smooth. That's what I'm saying. It is, and you can t- like chase that. Close your, eyes. Know, honestly, Close your eyes. Honestly, I don't know what you mean about smooth anymore because you literally say every single coffee is smooth. No, it's not some of them. Like, it's, I can replay. I'll go through the video footage. Every single coffee you taste, you're like, it's smooth. It's good. It's smooth. Here's it a challenge. Here's a, if you want to roast me that hard, challenge is at the very end of this episode, you go back to and go listen to every single audio clip and hear when I say it's smooth and pair them all together. Like, honestly, you literally say it's smooth every I dare, time. I dare you. I want to see that, actually, now that they want to see it. That'd be hilarious, me saying it's smooth, like, nine times. I don't think it is there. So if it isn't, then I don't say it. <laughs> um, no, but great mugs. The one really cool one about this mug right here is while I'm flying to Germany, um, I'm sitting in, like, premium economy, so... Well, at Bulkhead Premium, or like, no, it's Bulkhead Economy, but it was like, no one's in front of me, and there's just bathrooms, and it's like, really um, stretching our legs out. And as we get on the plane, the guy sits next to me, and he goes, um, he like brings the stewardess, and he's like, can I get some wine? And I'm like, man, we just took off, we haven't even had dinner yet. So Buddy and me are drinking wine, right by the beginning, because I don't want to be rude, right, because he offers it to me. Mm -hmm. And as we're drinking, he lays his bottle, I don't know how many he had, I only had like one glass, he lays the bottle halfway, and the guy picks up his the the the, the tray. Yep. And then the wine he left like half full spills all over my jeans, and then all over my shoes. And I was wearing leather shoes and then blue jeans. And I just looked at him and I go, "Um, what, like what am I supposed to say? I'm literally on a plane for the next like seven hours, and I'm just like." Uh, you literally just like roasted my legs and my feet. And then I was like, okay. So I went to the bathroom and I looked at him and we're talking and I'm talking about how I'm like in the mining industry and he's doing something with like film or something like that. And Probably starting a podcast. Yeah. And I was talking about my mugs because I said I collect them. Um, and then he went down into, he's like, you know what? Wherever I go, I'm going to take, let, let me have your business card and I'll send you a mug for payment of me spilling wine on your pants. And I said, okay, so I go go in my suitcase, because I'm going to the trade show, I have extra ones, up top, grab my card, give it to him. And um, then I tell my dad about this whole story and stuff like that, and people working with me, and they all laughed and they said, you're not getting a mug, you're not. And then like, um, after the trade show, I think it was like three months later, all of a sudden, this mug shows up on my steps. And he went to France in the Keynes Festival. Yep. And it's a special mug for a festival only the film in festival. France. Yep. And I didn't even know. And and then his mug just comes. The guy doesn't even re- write his name on it. No return address. Exactly. And That's just, the thing. There's no return address. Like, so you don't have even no know way. this guy's name. Just chilling next to me on the middle seat. And then he just sends me a mug. What a G. Um, amazing. So... I'm still impressed. I still blew everybody away. I said, I know he'll do it. Because who spills wine on a buddy's pants in the middle of a flight and then... Um, and then doesn't do anything about yeah. it? Yeah. So, so, what a great guy. Um, we have a basically... Plus, it's like a limited edition, too. So, like... Yeah, which is awesome. Uh, we have every single... Okay. Every single city in Germany I bought, which was crazy expensive because I bought them all in the airport. I know it's cheating, but and I'm not going to go to every single one right now. And they're discontinuing them. So... Um, I'm the only one I couldn't get was there's a German, there's a American Air Force base in Germany that has a special dairy mug, but you have to be in the American Air Force in Germany to get the mug. Okay. So it's not my it's not my fault. And then the Nuremberg one that's there, I had to go downtown Germany near the Hofbrauhaus, House, the one the sweater I'm wearing, and buy the mug. Nice. So. so you literally bought all these mugs. All the mugs, yeah. yeah. Which we've got a, a nice, decent amount, uh, decent amount here. But in terms of flying, um, mm-hmm. we we have a couple articles. Uh, let's go with United right now. Uh, there's this CNN article that says that's titled "United says demand for travel is essentially zero and signals layoffs." And I looked into the article a bit. Ninety-eight percent, right? Like. Uh, yeah, so basically, uh, travel. Here's here's kind of like a little excerpt from the 
article. Less than 200,000 people flew with us during the first two weeks of April this year, compared to the more than 6 million during the same time in 2019. A 97% drop, and as we expect to fly fewer people during the entire month of May than we did on a single day of May in 2019. A 97% drop. Like, there's literally airlines, they have no idea what they're doing. Like, and I was reading into it a bit more, and I don't actually have the excerpt, but basically they have, because the government paid them some money, right, to help keep people employed, they're basically good until October 1st. The but at airline companies? Delta is, mm-hmm. until October 1st. But the you moment- said United. Oh. oh. Interesting. Don't be confusing the audio listeners. They're going to be losing their minds right now. Yeah, okay, so it's You're United. You're welcome. You, it's United. Okay. But yeah, you Delta's uni- already screwed up because they flew. You, no, you two told geese. me on the phone. You said it was Delta. Well, it doesn't You matter. called me. So Here's I started thing. writing it and then I copied the link in. Here's and the thing United. Delta had two geese fly into their. Um, and yes, to, that's the and news then they had to they had to slow down and they had to do, um, turn around again because you know in the Hudson River one what's what was that guy's name uh, Scully or yeah, Sully Sully and yeah, then yeah. so they didn't want to have round two of that um, and then they they just had that this week so they're already having poor business there we go. and then that's they literally put a they literally story. put a bird in their plane they're like can we get any worse luck. Yeah, yeah. 30 people on board and they already have to cancel it all and that would suck. It's like, wait, we actually have a full plane? Why? <laughs> why did we have to hit a bird? Um, the goose is just like, why are you flying? No, yeah. we're not doing that today. Yeah. Um, also, Air New Zealand. I don't know why you even put this in here, but Air New Zealand, it plans to axe all Boeing 777 crew. That's crazy. Also, I float, flew Air, um, Air New Zealand one time. Interesting. So, is it good? Um... I was, okay, this is one of my first original flights when I went to New Zealand in, when I was 10 years old, and my dad was actually super elite at the time okay. um, for Air Canada, but they said that they get a group package if he flew, if everybody flew Air New Zealand, but my dad's like, well, I get free, fl- like, free upgrades and everything if I go to Air Canada. So right. he took it, I didn't know this at the time as much, but he took one for the team. We get on the flight, and they have, like, little, like, plastic controllers that you put on your, on your seat, like... Now I used to think about it. It's so old, the technology on the plane. But um, it wasn't no bad. No touch screens, nothing like that. No, it was like all, like you have to use your just like controller on the plane to do it. Right. It was, dude, it the was remote like remote control, yeah. Ancient. Yeah, it was crazy. That's when I was a young buck. That's, uh... Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the young buck. But you have gone to special places and we do have a little bit of some restaurants that you want to bring up. Yeah, so well. when I was in Germany, people were roasting me, some of my coworkers, and I said, every single night we're here, I promise you that I'll be able to do a good restaurant. And this is when I first did it before, because sometimes I know pretty good restaurants. I've taken Grant there before, like in Canada, where I've blown some people away. And I was like, so my goal was, after the, sh- the show was done, or the booth at that day, I'd like take 10 minutes, come up with a meal and be like, okay, hey guys, what kind of cuisine do we want? Um, and everybody just says the name and then I pick one. Right. So some of the really cool ones were the hem, uh, work, hem, what's that, what that word? The hem work glockenge back retail. Yeah. So we all went there and I actually have it. <laughs> I probably butchered if, that. I'm if, sorry. If anybody wants to know any of these restaurants, they're all on my Instagram story for, of Germany on my account. Right. Um, and that one had schnitzels of every kind. So I had the cordon bleu. Um, the French meal with like the ham and the Swiss sandwich all together. I actually made one of those in cooking class, side note, in grade nine or ten. Um, and th- I had a schnitzel of that one. I had this so is the Hofbrauhaus Munich. Um, I actually got a mug from there and a T-shirt. And it's a famous beer hall because there's only five beer companies that are allowed to be in Germany. I heard from my cousin. Right. Um, then we have a restaurant. How do you say that? Ace Tata. S Ace T I R. That was the first restaurant I ever liked red wine from. Um, 45-year-old balsamic Italian restaurant, blow your mind. And the restaurant 181 is actually on this mug actually as well. And it's the tallest building. I'm oh, that's the sure tower. The that tallest tower yeah. in Germany. But I know it's the tallest tower in Munich. Right. Um, this was, it was unreal. Great views. Food was all right overpriced 70 76 euros to get up it 
Ooh. Way, way, way more than the CN, CN Tower. Tower. Yeah, yeah, it was crazy. Interesting. Um, and then the wine from that one Italian restaurant that I actually found out that I liked um, by an accident. I went to my one coworker. He's from Holland. His name's Hans. So cool. <laughs> and, Hans is um, such a German name. I looked at him and I go, um, I don't like red wine. Um, surprise me because I can't read most of this stuff because it's all in German. And then he goes, Oh, okay, I'll, I'll get you a wine that you like. And I'm like, I doubt it looks through spends like five minutes going through the whole menu and he goes oh we'll get this one then i taste it and i go holy smokes how did you actually get me to like this and then i find out afterwards that it was a hundred euros for wine and then i got a little bit of in trouble afterwards because we got two bottles of it but um <laughs> playing a little bit with the money all right yeah see but it, it was it was unreal um so these three restaurants oh the last one that actually didn't have written down was its best restaurant was burger lobster bank and it was, you get lobster and a burger on a burger. I mean, that was so dumb. You get lobster and beef on a burger, and then you get like side lobster and like asparagus. No, you don't get a side of lobster. You put a side of lobster. I don't know how that worked, but I actually put like a lobster on the side. Um, best... Basically, you had two meals. Okay. Okay, but like all time, if you're going to go there, if they're still open after this whole pandemic, there's a local business, but they charge through the roof. So um, totally go there. These are, uh, we'll leave them in. Um, the website and we'll also do it um on the youtube link but unbelievable restaurants totally have to check them out uh love them right. i would totally take you to all three of these grant um we should move on to tech probably yes and we actually have some new interesting stuff happening in tech yes and as we're doing that as it's german themed i thought i'd bring a beer and we try some some beer with uh hofbrier munich how, uh, your, uh, Look at this. Call this. We're bringing it back to food. Everyone's like, hey, we like the uh, two chefs in the kitchen. We're going to talk about restaurants. We're going to have a little bit of beer. Ooh. Wow. That was very loud. But yeah. uh, there we go. Um, but yeah, the, as I was saying, there was some... Uh, here's my glass, by the way. Thank you. Um, Good thing we pre Yes, exactly, <laughs> right? Well, I don't uh, even know what our hand sanitizer is even called. I feel bad for not helping them. Uh, one step, live clean. Live clean. There you go, live clean. Um, okay, but yeah, as I was saying, there's actually some new tech stuff that happened recently. Um, two new exciting phones have been released, and that is the OnePlus 8 Pro, including the OnePlus 8, and as well as Apple's $400 USD iPhone SE is here, and it might actually fit in your pocket. Um, it's a 4.7 inch screen, uh, which is which is great because I like small phones. Jason, on the other hand, he'll probably disagree because he likes those those big okay. boys with so. those those Note 10 Plus. Uh, like seven inch screens. I, oh, you've even okay. We've even talked about this on the podcast. Jason basically wants an iPad in his pocket, like that foam. Yeah, exactly. So the cool thing I'll say about both of those, um, I bought my brother one thing that made it like a draft beer every time. A machine, oh which is really goodness. cool. I'm really bad at pouring. Um, and this is a Heineken that we're drinking, just letting everybody know. Not from Germany, from the Netherlands, but sorry, guys. Right. And this is my second beer in my entire life. Yes, because I think I gave you your first one. No, no. I gave that you Summer's even, V. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I, I really disliked that. But yeah, no. This isn't bad. So this is a very big glass for a very this small is, beer. This is the start of the second season where we try <laughs> beer and you try to get me on beer. Dude, Adam, or Shazi boy, he literally was like, make sure you drink a beer on the podcast. So here you go, Adam. We're drinking a beer. Oh. There we go. Clink it. Clink it before you drink it, but we got Corona, so we're not going to do that. We don't have Corona. You no, could. we don't have Corona. Dude, don't make it sound like that. <laughs> no, we don't, but we're like good. social good. distancing. Yeah, I'm hot. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I mean, my, my hoodie is. No, but. Yeah, you decided to wear uh, a nice hoodie. I went with the more uh, lighter uh, cloth Cool hoodie, fabric. eh? This is literally from the, the place I'm drinking it out of. We are so here. distracted on this podcast. It's great. This is true. So, um, yeah. um, back so what, to the phones. So what I'll say, OnePlus um, trying to make a flagship after they go after this whole commercial after all these years saying flagship killer, same as um, Pixel saying that they're keeping the headphone jack and then they basically don't, they take it away and then bring it back. So kind of pissed off that OnePlus is basically changing up what their whole model is, but they're trying to change change it up. Um, it's all right. Uh 
I, I like having the pop-up camera that they took away that I know we were looking at you were looking at getting a new yeah, camera. Yeah, because literally at the end of May, yeah. I was going to, I my phone's going to be paid off. So now I'm looking at p- possibly picking up a new phone because we all know, we've all said it enough, my phone is trash. Um, yeah. So I, I oh, was thinking garbage. of going, it, it is, um, switching to OnePlus. But it's interesting is that Apple pulled a OnePlus. Like literally in the same week, OnePlus is like, I'm gonna release an $800 phone. Um, well, Apple's and- Apple's smart, that's why. So OnePlus, I would say is, so the privacy thing was good about the pop-up camera. Yeah, there's mechanical issues, but whatever. Just try it, like it, it was a really, really cool idea. Um, Apple was a genius, because I guarantee you, and I don't know what people will say this, but legit, um, having it $399 was not the original price, because the original iPhone 8 was $474 for the base model 4.7 screen, and now they're selling the iPhone 8, or the SE, for $399, and this one has 11 specs in an 8, selling it for cheaper than what they sold it for the regular 8. But this is the this is the whole idea of like Apple's playing a game. Oh, for sure. And they also probably have extra stock in China on the 8s previously, and they probably have cut deals with case companies and stuff like that, and they have extra stuff from their 11s, from their 11 Pro Max, right? They have all the specs. They already have everything. They're just putting it all together. Um, and because people are basically losing their jobs left, right, and center because of uh, corona, and we're blessed to have jobs, but basically, uh, great move. Um, I think they're going to sweep up so many of the people that are uh, the bottom feeders of like Huawei and long time, used to be Samsung before they, they jumped up, Sony phone. Like, they're going to be in trouble for trying to make business now. Well, the thing is, is they reversed the game. OnePlus, literally, who used to be the cheap phone, yeah, sent out an $800 phone, and then Apple's now like, hey, look at us, $400 phone! And they're like, now we're the cheap kid on the block. I want to see how much the revenue is on this. Well, Um, yeah, the thing is, as well, is, like, Blockbuster didn't want to cannibalize on their business with streaming, and guess what happened? Blockbuster just um, went away. Polaroid didn't want to cannibalize with their analog cameras, but then digital cameras came along, right? Smart businesses, like... They, if they don't make the choices and they don't steal their own customers from like their premium products, someone else yeah. is going to come along, and that's what OnePlus did. But now OnePlus has become the premium phone, and now a- Apple's like, hold up, we just got you guys all selling thousand dollar phones, and, but we are now releasing like a cheap phone, and they're basically stealing back their customer and base. And they purposely did white, black, and red. It's perfect. Like it's not, it's <laughs> the not the cheap colors. ones. It's well, also, like, the red one was for AIDS, um, helping out with them and supporting and giving money any time you pick red. But it's, like, the classic colors, too, so you can't tell, right? So, yeah, they did move the logo, like, all the other phones now in the middle. Um, they don't, it doesn't say iPhone on the back, but it still looks clean. Um, how also is the beer? Did you try it? you like it? Yeah, it's actually, it's way better than my first beer that I had. The Heineken's really good. It's an expensive beer. It's yeah. a premium, actually. When Like, whenever you go anywhere, a restaurant, like, I'm more of a wine drinker, but they literally do say, like, it's a... It's a premium, uh, it's like $6 for a glass. Yikes. Like that's smaller crazy. than what you're drinking now that, is 6 bucks. That's crazy. And you're like, uh, are you kidding? Um, <laughs> I'm like, I don't like beer that much. This one is crazy that. over there, like how much these cost. This is like $14 euros. I, I thought it would have been cheaper if it was in Germany. Like, Yeah, but that's you- cheaper. Like, you know how many, like, you, like, I think there's like three glasses in this. True. Like if you drank a full one, not saying I did. But I mean, and for the audio listeners, basically you're lifting up a giant mug. I don't even know how many, like, okay, it's the size of our, uh, what is this? Our French press. Literally look up a French press and then make it bigger. And that's the size of the cup I'm holding right now. It's, it's monster. Right. It's like a barbarian cup. Another thing that's kind of (laughs) stepping up to different sizes is Microsoft is trying to, uh, introduce video meetings with no sign up needed for those wanting a difference from Zoom alternative because Zoom is a little bit of a sneaky sneaky and the US has kind of banned it from like being used in like Is Zoom government. Chinese? Uh, I'm pretty sure it is. Yeah. And Microsoft aka he means Skype um, because basically yeah. I, I don't like Zoom. I don't know why everybody's using Zoom. 
use Microsoft. It's or sorry, I mean use Skype. It's better. Yeah, but Skype. The quality but at the same, Okay, but at the same time, Skype is like Microsoft isn't great. Like literally, they're Microsoft. But Zoom's quality is garbage. Like I did a call because everybody's like, do a call, and then I had to like sign in to a whole account. It was garbage. Yeah, because you didn't turn your uh, quality up to HD. Most people don't know how to do that. I don't think it was. Well, they've limited the quality too. I think like Netflix. No, no, they haven't. I don't know, man. It is garbage. But it's funny because like I have Zoom calls with people, and they're always like. Oh, you look so good, and I'm like, mm-hmm, yeah. But I'm like, I think you're I saying that in general. No, but I also have the uh, the HD option turned on. If you go into settings, you can t- enable HD on your camera, mm-hmm. and you look so crisp. Whereas everyone else is like pixelated blocks, and you're like, Thank I just, you. yeah. It, I, I'm more of a yeah, uh, yeah. I'm a, I'm a Skype dude all the way. I'm, I don't even like Skype. I don't like I'm more Skype. Skype. I'm more Discord. Um, to be also to be thing fair. I want to throw out there just for let everybody know because for the tech guys basically. Um, I when bought, we literally talk about Germans and coffee. <laughs> I bought a Bose speaker recently just because I was like, you know what? I've always been on that fence. It's like, do you really need a speaker if you have a phone? But I was like, let's change it up. I'm working at, I'm working out at home now, um, lifting those weights. So I just want to have like a, not always having the speaker, the headphones on my head. Right. And Bose doesn't even like ship it. So like I bought one in the States and bought one in here because the cases were on backlog. And they, I get the case in, and, and it's like I ordered it later, and it's already coming in. And Bose literally has still not me sent me a confirmation email, so their shipping is garbage. Great products. I love how terrible you terrible shipping, but you bring in like the shipping when literally every single company's shipping is down. Literally France, Amazon. No, is but I'm shut saying down. Bose.com is is instant. But still, like, but still, like Amazon in France is shut down because they were shipping wrong no, things. No, I get right? that, but I'm saying you can't have your American company killing it and like sh- telling me information and saying it's, hey, it's gonna be here on April 23rd. And then the Canadian company's like, uh, we don't even have a confirmation. We don't even know when it's gonna be sent. We don't even know, but it's in stock. Like, it's crazy that I, they, they don't even communicating at all. So Bose is terrible at communication. Just letting you know. We'll change, we'll- I'm taking a leap of faith. I don't usually buy Bose. I buy Sony. I have Sony headphones. I have Sony earbuds i just think that that the mini thing is gonna be perfect like the mini we we measured it me and grant is literally the size of my phone which is either that it's a small speaker or my phone's huge <laughs> your phone is huge i don't know but uh it's actually hilarious so we'll see i'll let you guys know how it sounds later on in the other episodes if it gets here and i'm also ordering a bike I think a little road bike exercise. Yeah. Um, so let's uh, let's leave the uh, <laughs> let's leave the uh, audience members with some TV show recommendations. So your recommendation, Outer Banks. He literally binge watched it all day yesterday. It was an accident. I was like, what am I gonna do? We stay up till four o'clock in the morning, watch like five episodes. Um, if you like romance, action, and suspense, and um, thinking that you could actually have a summer this year, which you're not going to have, <laughs> uh, all into one in a great show of 10, ep- 10 episodes, and then thinking you're going to get a season two, but Corona actually basically stops that. Um, watch this. Third in Canada, I thought it was going to be trash. Get to the third episode. Keep watching. Blows your mind. And then for me, I've got Brooklyn Nine-Nine, the new season eight. I'm excited actually, about that. I was actually watching it live. Like, I've already watched a couple of the episodes and then with my friends and then the whole the coronavirus thing happened. So I actually have, I'm like halfway through the season right now mm-hmm. because we haven't been able to get together to watch the rest oh, of the episodes. My. But season eight is being released on Netflix. I'm excited about that. On April 24th. 24th. That's going to be so exciting. It's, it is going to be exciting. Then every, everyone's going to binge watch that, right? That's true. It's, also, um, I went 265 uh, kilometers in Germany. I just wanted to throw that out. That that is kind of cool. I, everybody's like, you're an idiot for going that fast, but I thought it'd be kind of neat to... I mean, NASCAR goes it. 310, so... It's true. It's, so. That's light work. Right on. Well, we uh, th- we're, that brings us to the end of our episode. I have one last very, very exciting news. I know a little Denny's going to like this, but May 27th, 2020 is the year and the date that space flight is going to come back to the United States. We are launching three astronauts on May 27th at four, I think it's 4.14 p.m. So can you elaborate? Because I actually don't know anything about this. Yeah, so literally, you know SpaceX and their rocket and whatnot? Yeah, it's like NASA, but it's a private 
yeah. company. Yeah, Elon Musk, the guy yeah. who makes Tesla. Well, his rocket, they've finally got the go-ahead. They've got astronauts ready. They're going to... First ever flight with astronauts in it that yep. are going to go to space. And this with is the, SpaceX. That's and crazy. this is the first time in like over a decade that someone is going to fly into space from U.S. soil. Uh, from North America. Oh, because we keep jumping on to like Russian exactly stuff. Because why did we stop that? Because the like the shuttles j- just weren't making it right, and we didn't have our own decent too rocket. much money and stuff like that. So we just kept jumping on. Well, the that plus, rocket. I'm pretty sure I can't. Um, like, so didn't we lose the, the Apollo 18 plans to like rebuild it? I think that they said that like there was. I think we talked about this on another episode in the past, but it's like. There were certain things that they did that they jerry-rigged it that we didn't actually write in the plans, and then the plans got lost, and then we haven't rebuilt it. Yeah, I don't know. All I know is that, like, I'm pretty sure there was a president who basically was like, nah, space flight, nah. And so then... Dude, and then, I'm pumped. Yeah, exactly. So May 27th... Can I go with them? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know if they want to have a coffee condenser going to the moon. That's fair. I'd be like, oh, because coffee's actually, like... Um, we're like losing it because they said no one's growing it in Brazil because of this. So they said there's gonna be a shortage. I've already stocked up, so just watch out. Yeah, guys. no, we've got enough coffee. <laughs> That's so true. I'll be like, Grant's gonna go. I'll be like, I need some. I'll be like, Grant, I, ho- I got you up. We- we're hooked up. We actually have like 14 bags now, I think. Yeah. Yep. So don't worry. We're s- we'll be good until this whole thing rolls over. We got enough coffee for you guys. Yeah. Just just be just. Send us send us DMs and we were like we can hook you up for, with yeah. some coffee. Send us some coffee. I, I wouldn't mind that actually. All right. Well, forty minutes in, we're ready to uh, leave and uh, sure. see is, you guys next week. Yeah, this is two bros in a coffee shop, and uh, thanks guys for listening. So have a great night and or day or evening or uh, or week. All right. So that's Peace how we roll. Guys. Peace out. I love it. I was like, burger and a lobster on a burger. And I was like, what? <laughs> it's so good. Man, you don't understand how much I love it. Like, it's so good. <gasps> I just, bro, I just don't understand. I'm so passionate about that food over there. I was like, oh. sorry. <laughs> it's all good, man.